So now we're finally back to make CA and once we build this, you'll find that the wget um, and links as well won't we'll complain about missing certificates or anything. So I need to tidy that up and fetch. Make CA and for the last time we'll put in the no check certificate. So we'll extract it. Oh, it looks like I've downloaded it twice there actually because it's got a dot one after the archive, so I'll just delete that. If I press tab there, I've got the original that I downloaded earlier and the one that I've just downloaded, so get rid of the copy. So all we'll do is install this. It says technically the package is installed at this point, but most packages listing make CA as a dependency actually require the system certificate store to be set up by the package instead of requiring the make CA program itself. So the instructions you're using make CA for setting up the system certificate store is included in this section. You should make sure the required runtime dependency for make CA is satisfied now and continue to follow the instructions. Well, we've done all that, so that's okay. So as the root user, download the certificate source and prepare the system for use with the following command. And there's a note here, if running the script a second time with the same version, for instance, to update the stores, oh yes, and basically it's just saying there's a different um, replace the G switch with the R switch. So for the first time we run it with this. And I get the revision from the server. I'm not sure if that's good or not. Let's try with the R option. Oh, okay, you've got a specify location. So there's a script. We'll have to see if this does work. Just carry on and see if it does work, despite that error. Um, there's, there's a cron script here, so I'm going to leave this make CA up. And as soon as we've installed cron, which again, I'll have to be quite early on, I think. I'll make a separate note of that to ensure I don't forget about installing it. Uh, so this is make CA. Okay. Uh, so there's no additional configuration, but it says you can add additional certificates here. Um, using this command here, or several commands. So let's run that now. Okay, so it looks like that R switch is not working because we haven't run it with the G switch, but we're getting an error. I would get revision from server exiting. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there because the name resolution's working, so I'm not sure why that command is failing. Uh, 
there's no verse option to get any more information. Check for a new version. Of... I suppose I think this is a script, so maybe we can have a look at it. Yeah. So it looks like this URL here is not working. Not sure if we can put that in a browser. Let's see what happens. Okay, well it's fetching it okay. Let's get revision from server. Okay, so that is the raw file. Uh, I think what's best is here if I um, go offline and try to resolve this. Um, I'm not sure if it's a problem with the file, if the file has changed layout or the script has changed and it's broken, there's something not quite right here. Um, or if it's something I've installed incorrectly, um, I have to try and fathom that out. So it's probably the best thing to do is just pause the video for a moment. Okay, well I've spent um, probably over an hour or so looking into this and I'm not quite sure what's wrong. I've got a workaround that seems to work okay. Um, I suppose time will tell actually whether it will work or not, uh, but it does seem to certainly install okay. Um, I'm not sure if I've missed something. Well, I know I haven't missed something in Linux from scratch because I built that using the automation. So unless there's something wrong with that, I'm pretty confident there's nothing missing there. Um, I've looked through the videos of the stuff that I've installed already to do with the certificates and I couldn't see anything that I've missed there or uh, copied wrong. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on. The only thing I can think of is that, um, well, it's perhaps better if I explain it by showing what I've found. Um, now, I haven't built beyond Linux from scratch for a couple of years and I'm pretty sure the last time I built it the script um, the make CA script looked a little bit different there's some extra checks in it now and I'm just wondering if the when the beyond Linux from scratch is tested by the editors they're not actually testing on a brand new machine without any certificates because it seems that once I can get some certificates installed then, then the script behaves as you'd expect it to behave. But at the moment, by default, it looks like to me it's checking for um, certification um, when it's actually installing or looking to install the new certificates. It's kind of like a chicken and egg situation. It needs certificates to check, but the certificates aren't installed, so it can't install them. Um, so the certificates need to be installed without the check. That kind of seems to be what app, what's happening. I'm not really sure because I'm... I don't know any, any of the stuff about this at all, but it's just what I've observed. So 
what I'll do is I'll start off from the beginning um, and install this from scratch again. So I'll do the make install. You'll notice it'll be overwriting what's already there because obviously I've been playing around with different versions and things trying to get this working, but that's not a problem. Um, so it's got the latest version installed and I'll recreate this directory because I know I've deleted it. So you can see it says it's created it. So if I now run the command as it says here, it will fail. And you can see it says checking for new version of cert data text. Now the version I looked at was from version BLFS version 8.4, which is quite old, but as I say, it's probably similar to the version I last did, which was probably 10 or 11, I'd imagine. Um, probably 10 actually, because I tried make CA 1.11 and that didn't work, but 1.10 did, so I'm assuming that's following the book numbers. Um, uh, because Make CA, I believe, is is been written by the LFS team or some members of the LFS team, that's why I say I think it follows the book numbers. Um, so what I've found is, I think, um, if I edit the file that's been installed, uh, it's in user s bin around about line 600 and yes yeah, 680 exactly um, well there's several extra bits that are not in version 10 so this test here is not in um, this part's not in the script and this line's not in either um, together with this bit as well so what I did I because it says verify return error I thought what I'll do is I'll just remove that so I've run that out save it and I'll rerun the script and then you can see it actually works so it downloads the cert data dot text And eventually, when it's finished downloading, it should start installing it. Okay, so has my internet gone down now? No, okay, so there it goes. So it's installing all these certificates now, so that's all right. Presumably, whatever check it has done then, it's obviously not a valid check for the installation as it is, but like I say, I can't tell that I've done anything wrong or different. So it's a little bit confusing, but there you go. It's installed it. That's what's supposed to happen initially. If I go back and reinstall the package. So if I now edit that again, you can see this verify return error has been put back. If I now rerun the make CA minus G because certificates are installed, uh, what well, it works, it says it, there's no update required because obviously I've already got this certificate installed. That's what it's doing, it's checking the versions. So if I add on force, it goes ahead and downloads it again and then reinstalls the uh, certificate. So that's why I'm kind of wondering if that check is a bit preemptive. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if the editors test this on a machine that's already got certificates on and that's why it doesn't fail for them or if I have done something wrong or something missing from the book, I'm not quite sure, but as you can see, I've got a workaround. So I'd really be interested to hear from anybody if they have the same problems I did. And um, likewise, if they didn't have the problem, it'd be interesting to to hear because I've, as you've seen, I've virtually hardly installed anything on Beyond the Linux from scratch. So it's a rather strange state of affairs. But yes, you can see that works. And also if I did the R switch, so it wouldn't download the certificate. It does just go ahead and rebuild all of the certificates like that. So it seems to work fine. Um, but like I said, I won't know for certain until the certificate store changes. And well, when we do the next WGET, see if it complains about the certificates in any way but it certainly looks like 
it's doing what it should be doing. That's that's the appearance. What it's doing there is uh, what it would do normally if it was working correctly. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit weird that. I'll just rerun this again because I've probably deleted these certificates because I've deleted directories and things to get things working. So once again, when it's downloaded these two two permission certificates, it should rerun this make CA without any problems at all. And there you go, it is running again. So that just shows that, um, well, it, it looks okay to me. And like I say, I'm expecting everything to work fine. It's just that initial uh, installation that seems to be a bit of a problem. But um, I've also checked on the Beyond Linux from Scratch uh, web page, the home web page. Let's just go there. Uh, right, these are all local, aren't they? Uh, there's no updates at all, uh, no errata, so it's either they don't know about it if there is a problem or there isn't a problem, it's something I've done, that's all it could be. Um, so we go read online, errata, so there's only something about libnotify, uh, libxcb and libwebkit gtk, so I think all of those programs build so it looks like might have to keep an eye out for that in case they don't work um so i'll keep that page up actually that'd be useful to have so yes um apart from that i think it's worked um there's just one other thing here to add um an export for python to use these certificates so i'll just add that in there and then if we do source etc profile echo dollar underscore pip yeah it's there so you can see that's been pulled in now so, so i'm going to keep make ca tab available so that I know that I've got to add in the cron bit and I'll just add a little note in my spreadsheet to say that uh, the cron job's got to be added when the uh, when cron has been installed and I'll just highlight this bit as well to remind me so yes, that, that is really the end of the first part of the security, which is installing MakeCA and getting those certificates working. So from now on, if ever I do a, um, a wget, in fact, if I do a links, HTTPS, that's from scratch. This should work without any warnings about uh, any certificates missing. Yeah, see, it's worked straight away. It hasn't asked me any questions. It's gone in there. So that proves that the certificates are actually working now. And the, the workaround that I did does seem to be okay. Um, obviously, I'm not, like I say, not a security expert, so I'm not sure if I have broken any rules there. But I can't see that it's any different to what used to be done in prior versions. So um, next thing I'll probably look at is where well, I'll probably go for sudo because I think that will start to bring in a few other things like Linux PAM, which is particularly important. OpenSSH will need to be reinstalled as well. And Shadow will need, will, well, that gets reinstalled because of PAM. So I think sudo will be a good one to go for next. Uh, let's put that there, I think. Let's see. Yeah, see, so the first one here is, is Linux PAM. Uh, like I said, not installing Kerberos. Open LDAP, probably don't need it in this situation. Um, MTA, we could install that because there is something somewhere that I think does need send mail. Um, but I'll leave that for now, I think. And Linux PAM, what does that need? Again, it's optional, but we can install this. 
Um, we've got these two all installed. There's probably other packages that use Bartley DB as well, so that's not a problem. Bartley DB needs show utils. And looks like that, so it's quite a simple chain this. Uh, well, for the time being anyway. Uh, because as we go down here, it does tell us to reinstall the shadow package after Linux PAM. So let's start with show utils. So fix a heat buffer overflow and initial exposed by GCC 10. And then install show utils by running those commands. So let's do that. Okay, let's do the tests. Okay, that's a pass. So let's install now, and that's complete. So I put that in my list as completed, and we'll shut that down. Go on to Barkley DB. This is quite a big download by the looks of it. Okay, let's extract it. I fix so it builds with the current versions of G and let's see what we can do with the config command here. If there's any extra options might want to put in. So explain some of the existing options. So we can enable TCL support. We've got that because that was part of Linux from scratch. Might be useful. And um, we've got enable Java here. Now we haven't got Java installed at the moment and it's not, funny enough, it's not an optional package, but Java is something, oh, it does say Java support is currently broken with Java 9 and higher, so it will be a later version, so that's just pointless adding that in. So we'll just leave it like that. And build it. Okay, that's done. So what we've got to do now is to install it. There's no test for the looks of it. And that's Barclay DB done. So Linux PAM some 
optional documentation. And it says here that Shadow 4.3 must be reinstalled and reconfigured after installing and configuring Linux PAM. And with Linux PAM 1.4 and higher, the PAM, PAM crackling model, module is not installed by default. Use PW quality to enforce strong passwords. Um, I don't normally install this because I find it a bit of a pain. Um, if you're just like messing around, it's, um, well, I end up disabling the strong enforcement of passwords. Um, I guess I could install it because I've never installed it before. Uh, it'd be quite interesting to do. So we'll do that first, I think. Uh, that requires Cracklib. So this hasn't got any dependencies. So let's download this now. Word list for English speaking. It's got a link there for additional word lists that aren't presumably English or maybe slightly different word lists. There's a note there about that. Okay, so tar XVF. So install it by doing this auto reconf. And then we run this Python command. We'll set Python as version three before we run the configure. Let's see if there's any other options here. Don't look like there's too much. Nope. So we'll configure that. Build it and install it. Okay, and then we've got some commands to install the word list. And check the proper operational library as an unprivileged user by issuing the following command. So come out of this change into sources be lfs crack crib in fact i suppose i should have su'd again really but yeah i'll do that because the profile hasn't been set up either is it the new profile we've got uh Let's change back to here. Okay, so make test. Okay, so it says, all oh, right, okay, so what's happened here is expecting that we, you know, uh, I didn't think about that all this time. I've had a uh, an ordinary user and haven't been installing as the ordinary user and should have been really. And it's ironic that I'm on sudo now. Uh, or build, building the packages for sudo. So let's um, let's do this again. And I'll have to change the ownership of everything to Kermitech. Okay, come back out, go into sources, BLFS. Okay, and uh, extract crack lib. So let's start this again. I'll run this all in because there's nothing unusual to do there. Okay, so I'll install this. Come back 
come back out to the ordinary user. Oh, sorry, I need to install the rest of it, don't I? So that's the word list. Come out of that. Now I can run make test. And it looks like that was a simple test. If you're installing Cracklip after your LFS system be completed and you have Shadow package installed, you must reinstall Shadow if you wish to provide strong password support with the system. If you're now going to install Linux PAM, you may be disregard this to note that Shadow will be installed after Linux PAM installation. Okay, well, we know we're including this for uh, lib password quality, so let's put that in as complete. Shut that down. Tidy it up and fetch the password quality. So lib PW quality. Right, actually recommends Linux Pam at this point. Okay, so maybe this is something we need to do after Linux Pam has been installed. Maybe that it's that way around. Like I said, I've never installed this before, so this is new to me. So let's extract Linux Pam. And it begins with a capital L rather than a lowercase L. So prevent installation of an unrequired or not required unneeded file. Install some documentation. And then we can configure, I'll just check the explanation see if there's anything extra there no so let's configure that okay so now let's build this there's a bit there about reinstalling upgrading something different to do Right, for a first time installation, create a configuration file. Okay, so let's just double check that this file is there. That's okay. Now run the test by issuing make check test a very long redirect the output to log file so you can inspect it thoroughly so let's see what happens let's see if we can tail that in another window So we can follow this log with tail minus F. Oh, it looks like it's completed. I thought it was going to take a long time, it said. <laughs> okay, not to worry. So let's view that file. I'll use Vi. It might use the colors. No, it hasn't done. So... 
Uh, right, so these are the bits it's talking about. So there's all passes, there's all passes, pass, 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 pass. Um, I wonder if I could look for fail on this. I'll look through the whole lot. Uh, grep minus my fail. Yeah, so there's no. Um, let's do it with a capital. Yeah, so you can see that all these fails, you can ignore the expected fails, they're all zero. So we know that basically that means that nothing has failed. So that's a good test. So it's become root again. Remove the other. This is only for a first time installation. And now install the package. configuration we recreate um i oh know we don't recreate it here somewhere we recreate another other file um, but all we need to do is just copy that uh, why hasn't that worked let's try that again And it says if you wish to know, right, okay, now it tells us about libpw quality and follow instructions on that page to configure. Okay, so now we've got to jump to libpw quality and install that. So I'll leave that directory there in case we need to come back to that. libpw quality. Uh, there wasn't any other options, so I'll just configure and make this. and become the root to install. So it says it's supposed to be a functional replacement for the now obsolete PAM crack lib. To configure the system to use PAM PW quality module, execute the following commands as root user. So what it's doing here is making a backup of the system password PAM file and it's replacing it with their own one. And looks like that's all we need to do for that. So I'll come out of that, tidy up. Okay, and I'll keep a copy of that. And we can carry on with PAM. So let's go back to the Linux PAM directory, become root again. Next, add a restrictive other configuration file. So it's the same with this file programs that are PAM aware will not run unless the configuration file has been explicitly created. And that's why it said don't run that command there to delete the other file because you will be overwriting this one if you're reinstalling. PAM main page has got some good information. You should now reinstall the Shadow 413 package, so we'll do that next. So a copy of that to put in our list and move on to Shadow. So again, don't copy the Shadow file in case it's uh, the Shadow package, in case it's a slightly different version, for example. Um, just download it again. So the installation command shown below for installation of Linux PAM has been installed and Shadow is being reinstalled to support the Linux PAM installation. 
If you're reinstalling Shadow to provide a strong pass of support using Cracklib library without using Linux PAM, ensure the with lib crack parameter. So the config is and also should, right. So we are using Cracklib with Linux PAM, so we don't need to do that. So it says to reinstall Shadow, we just put this all in. There's no other options for us to add into the configure command, so we'll just run that. And as long as we see a make command running and it finishes OK, we'll know that all that lot has completed successfully. So that's the end of the configure by the looks of it. Yep, there's the make going and it's done. No test suite, so we'll become root. Install it and reinstall the man pages. So configuring Linux Pan to work with Shadow. There's some information here about configuring Linux Pam. Um, basically all we need to do is copy this, paste that in. And some more configuration scripts. So I need to copy and paste these in for each of these programs. Just ensure that you're copying all of the text and you're not missing off a character at the beginning or end. Make sure you don't get any errors when you've pasted it in. So it says at this point you should do a simple test to see if Shadow is working expected. Open another terminal, log in as root, and then run login and log in as another user. If you do not see any errors, then all is well and you should proceed with the rest of the configuration. Okay, so I'll do that on this terminal here. I should really do it at the console. I'll do it as well, but I'll do it from here to show that it's working. Yep, that's worked. And it says to type in login. Can I press it without effective root? Okay, so let's become root. Now do login. And I'll log in as myself. That's worked. And you've seen that I've become root by doing SU, so that bit works as well. I'll just do the same thing quickly on the terminal itself in case it's a slightly different method of access, which it might be. So I'll log in as root. Obviously you can't see this, but it's the same as what I just did. Okay, so I'm in successfully as root. I'll type in login. I've got the login prompts. So I'll type kernel text and my password. And I'm in as kernel text, so I'm going to do su minus to become root again. And that's worked as well. So I'm happy that that's all working successfully. So I can carry on. So instead of using the etc login access file for controlling access to the system, Linux PAM uses the PAM access module along with etc access, uh, security access conf. Rename the etc login access file using the follow command. Uh, we better be root, didn't we? So let's come back out. Uh, not in this terminal. Let's do it in this one. So I'll paste that in there. And then instead of using the etc limits file for limiting usage of re system resources linux pam uses the pam limits so module with the etc security limits comp file rename the etc limits file using the following command that's fine and again it says be sure to test the login cap capabilities of the system before logging out errors in the configuration cause permanent lockout requiring the boot from external source to correct the problem well as i say i'm quite happy in fact I'll shut this tab down and just do it once more to prove that it works okay yep I mean and if I do the login again okay become root login and 
become kind of text. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's just stay in there actually. So that's shadow reinstalled. So now we're back to sudo. Let's tidy this up. Fetch sudo and paste. So configure, so any other things we can use here, secure path, all insults, end of editor, pass prompt, without Pam, we've got Pam, so we don't need that. So we'll configure. And build it. That's done. Let's now test it with this command here. And we can check the results. Oops, thought that finished then. Okay, now it's finished. Let's paste it in. And there's no output, so that means it's all worked okay. SU become the root and install it. And that's done. So configuration. Um, so what it's doing here is adding a setting for any member of the wheel group so let's add that in in very simple installations where there's only one user it may be easier just to edit this sudo as file directly in that case the secure path entry may not be needed and using sudo minus e can import non-privileged users for environment to privileged session so basically what it's saying is when the user of the wheel group gains access um, via sudo then the default path will be this, but it's saying in an environment where there's only one user, for example, I suppose in this environment, you might not need that line just to let the uh, user that becomes or gets escalated privileges to have access to its own path. Otherwise you have to use this sudo minus E. Um, but I'll probably leave it as that. Um, and it's recommended to use via sudo to edit that file, um, it does some checks to make sure there's no problems, which is a good idea. I know I've made changes before and left a little typo in. Uh, so that will check that sort of thing. So we need to create a PAM configuration file for sudo and it's done. So what we've got to do now is to give access to sudo, uh, give, sorry, kind of text access to the wheel group to allow that to work. If I try doing sudo su minus, for example, I put in my password so we're not in the sudo as file. So I need to log out of that because I need to get a new session. And we need to do uh, is it user mod. Uh, we need to do minus a to append, then minus capital G to add a group. And we want to add the wheel group 
to the Kernatex user. So now if we look at the groups that Kernatex has, you can see it's got its own group and wheel. So that now means if I log out and reconnect, if I type groups here, it should tell me I'm part of the wheel group. And also if I do something like that, I can type in my password and you can see now I've become root, it hasn't rejected me. So that's all working fine. Let's tidy that up. And copy that as completed to the log of installed packages. Go back to security, see what else is left here. So the, there are other files that are going to be installed um, as we go along. We will be coming back here, but I'll leave them. The only other one I might do now is open SSH. Uh, right, OK, this needs an Excel build environment, which for tests and GDB. So it's not like else, actually. Um, Net tools and Sysstat for entropy. So I think I'll leave that until um, we've got Xorg built, which is going to be the next thing to install, I think. Um, I'll just make a note on my spreadsheet that this needs to reinstall um, after Xorg. So we'll leave that for now. But yes, apart from that, um, there's no other options we need to do to um, get the security or any helper files installed. So I'll get rid of that tab. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to think, is there anything like cron that could be installed now? Uh, things like that, anything that might help a little bit more. Um, so the next big thing I'm going to be installing is Xorg to get a graphical environment and then installing a browser so that it can actually go onto the machine rather than doing things remotely. Actually do the rest of the build on the machine. It would be much nicer to do it there rather than over a link. Um, so let's have a look for cron. I can't think of any other tools I might want to install at the moment. There are other tools I would normally install in the distribution. Uh, if I'm creating one or, you know, if I'm installing a new system, is things like HD Palm, for example. Um, Log Rotate could be useful. LM sensors, things like this, PCI utils, P7Zip. There's lots of extra utilities that can be installed, um, but they're not particularly important at the moment, which is one that could be installed. Um, but I think that gets installed on our journey. Yeah, I can't really see anything else at the moment. Again, Java, that's something that will install. That has a lot of dependencies as well, including Xorg. So that's not something we'd really want to do now. Yeah, I think let's go with cron, fcron in this case. So yeah, this is the one that's got an MTA. It says it's optional, but it's probably a good idea to set up um, an MTA uh, so you can get messages about things going wrong if you configure it. Um, I'm not sure what this does. It's an optional one. Okay, so it just converts to a different document format by the looks of it. Uh, I'm not sure how many dependencies that's got. Let's have a look. We've got these two, haven't we, I think. Oh, no, we haven't. No, so we'd need these two as well. 
SP. This Jamil Cullen we've got. Yep. Jimenez and now XML TO. Uh, yeah, there's Jimenez. Oh, we haven't got that one. XML, XML non, XML two. We've got that. Fop, I think, has got a lot of dependencies. Yeah, it's on nine dependencies. So this could be something we install, and then once the dependencies for Fop have been installed, such as Apache in a graphical environment, that's purely to run the tests. Uh, but that would be good to test it thoroughly. Um, we could reinstall FOP once these have been installed. So that's looking like a possibility. Dot book three. SP up in Jade. Right, yeah, it looks like we could do this. There's a few dependencies there, but um, I think we should be able to do that. And that's all to get docbook installed, uh, which might provide some extra documentation, which could be useful. Uh, so let's start that again. I don't know what I'm doing. And again, these sort of things will be used by other packages, so it's not just purely for FCron. Um, let's put that back there. So let's do the MTA first of all, and I think send mail is probably the easiest, easiest one here. All right, okay, this requires open LDAP, so we may as well install that. Just a basic installation. These both require Cyrus. And go script. That probably needs graphical environment. So once again, I'm getting into the realms of things that we don't really need now, but are going to be installed at a later date. So you can see how things can quickly blow out of proportion. Um, Right, again, things like MariaDB, um, possibly Sphinx. Certainly MariaDB will be installed for other packages. So I think I'll install Cyrus Sazzle with a rebuild note to build it after MariaDB and Sphinx. Uh, let's have a GNU TLS. So we've got everything there except for Unistring. Yeah, we can do that. I'm not going to install text live now. Uh, where do we get to? Okay, we're not going to install anything else there. Ghost script. Not sure about that one at the moment. Yeah, that's got lots of other. X related stuff, so I'm not going to do that. And in fact, what I might do because Ghost Script's not being installed, um, I think I'll just install um, I just need RPDB. We've got. Yeah, it's making a decision about what to install. Let's start with libuni string. That can make things a little bit less complicated. So paste that in.
So there's nothing special to configure here. No, no extra options to suggested. Okay, that's in, uh, built, so let's run some tests. Okay, that's complete. Looks like everything passed, so let's install. There's the root user. So type my own password in and that is installed. So get rid of that one. Um, oh, let's have a look at this while we're here. Oh yeah, that's got quite a number of dependencies, so I'm not going to install that. And so is that okay? Um, so yeah, I think Cyrus Sazzle can be installed as it is, but I'll build it or I have to put a note against it to rebuild it. Let's copy the configure command and see if there's anything else that might want to use. Uh, oh, this needs open LDAP, doesn't it? I just saw the notes there. It does say it's optional. And what does open LDAP need? That's recommended. Okay, so I'll have to install open LDAP afterwards, I suppose. Didn't say anything of being a circular dependency. But then it is optional, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, where was it? It was something. Oh, yes, it's required. So we do need to install it. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going to have to install Cyrus without Open LDAP. Then install Open LDAP with Cyrus and then reinstall Cyrus with Open LDAP. I think that's probably the way to do this. So let's just take a look at these again. Stimpvm. Okay, I don't think I'll be changing anything else there. So let's just copy that back in again.
Okay, so unfortunately it looks like we've got to build this on one thread, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but obviously a lot longer than it would do on multiple threads. Okay, well that wasn't that long anyway, so <laughs> that's all right. Yes, we do. So if I echo path here, it should be. Oh no, it hasn't worked, has it? How does that work? Okay. Does that work? No, it doesn't work either. Yeah, I'm not sure how to show this working. No, it didn't work. Um, what I'm trying to do is to get the pseudo SU prompt up. Let's just try SU on its own. No. Uh, I guess we could just do each of these at one at a time or just do that anyway become root um, it's probably not a problem at the moment it might be a problem later on where we've got environment variables that we want to keep um, having said that this hasn't worked oh right okay because i'm not in the right directory so i need to do sudo su so i'm in the right directory then paste that in So we don't need this Sazzle auth daemon because I'm not going to be running it. Um, so I won't install that. But what we'll do is tidy up, ready for the next build. And I'll add that to my list with a note saying rebuild after open LDAP. So now I'm going to build open LDAP. We'll just and there's a patch there as well. Okay, so let's extract it. So if you only need to install the client side LDAP uh, binaries, corresponding man pages, libraries, and header files, refer to as client only install, issue the commands. So yeah, that's all we need to do. So I'm going to run all of these. And to be quite honest, looking at this, it probably, yeah, probably doesn't need a lot of these optional packages. But as I say, um, MariaDB is definitely going to be installed. And GNU TLS, I was going to install that actually, but uh, it may not need to be installed. Um, in the client only, but well. Uh, perhaps I should have actually, yeah, I should have installed that first of all. Let's tidy that up and do this one next. Oh, and this has got optional packages as well, actually. Right, I'm actually going to delete that and I will install it another time. Go back to open LDAP, reinstall that. So 
so I'll shut that down. That hasn't been installed. Copy this all again. Okay, and as the root user, install. So in theory, the rest of this don't need to touch because it's all about running the LDAP server. So that just needs to be installed or reinstalled. So rebuild after GNU TLS and MariaDB. So that's done. That was the install, wasn't it? Yep. So let's tidy that up. So now I'm going to reinstall Cyrus Sazzle to make use of um, OpenLDAP. So, extract it again. Um, I've got to put with LDAP this time, I think. And remember, I'm only doing this because Open LDAP's a requirement for another package. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother with it. Okay, so there's nothing there confirming we've got LDAP so I can see, but anyway, let's build it. Become the root and install the package again. And that's done for now. So Cyrus Sazzle's got to be reinstalled. Rebuild after Maria DB and Sphinx. So I'll just strike out the other rebuild for Cyrus because that's completed. On my spreadsheet. Okay, so I can get rid of this. Shut that down, go to send mail, send mail needs, Cyrus recommended, optional ghost script. So let's download it, extract it. Before building SEMO, create the required user group directory following commands issued as the root user. See the source tree send mail readme file for information linking optional packages into the build. For example, below S supports for Sazzle, Start TLS, and Open LDAP as a starting point. Okay, so I think we could probably add those in. As we've got those to some extent, 
Install SendMail with the following commands. This is no test suite. So install it with that. Install the SendMail installation operation guide with the following commands. Remove the OPPDF from make install if you haven't installed Go, Go script. Okay. So. Looks like it's just that bit, is it? Yep. And now it's the root user. Okay. Maybe that, yeah, oh yeah, that needs to be modified. OP.pdf, take that out. That's now worked. And we can go back. Configuration, be sure to have fully qualified domain name. Create the etc mail local host names and send etc mail aliases using the following commands as the root user. Send mail's primary configuration files etc mail send mail to see if it's complex and not meant to be directly edited. The recommended method for changing it is to modify etc mail send mail mc in various m4 files, then run the m4 macro processor from within etc mail as follows. Okay, and we need to install a boot script as well. Make install send mail. And we should be able to start that up. Uh, what's that there? The QNM option to send mail where N is number of minutes. Controls are often send mail and may process the mail queue. Okay, so that's like a decision you'll have to make. So send mail is complete, except it needs to be rebuilt after. Uh, ghost script. Oh, that's only for documentation. So, well, it's if you want to do that, I suppose I'll put it in. Uh, ghost script will get installed. So, I suppose we could make the system more complete. So, I'll put rebuild after ghost script for PDF documentation so I know that it's not absolutely necessary for some reason we find I don't install go script and that is done back to fcron so we're just left with installing docbook utils again this is for more documentation i think i don't think you can ever get enough documentation if it's relevant um, i say in the past i've installed api documentation but obviously i never use it because i don't dabble around with those sort of things um, but if you want to do a complete a build blfs build as possible there might be something you want to do or want to consider possibly just for completeness so this needs openj dogbook SSL dogbook 3.1 runtime dependencies HTML SPM that's a Perl module so that can actually be installed now by the looks of it
change the permissions on a file to prevent an error. Run these commands to build and test the package and make install. Run the following command as the root user. And that looks like that's done. So let's put that in the build list. Shut that down and tidy up. Dockbook 3.1 needs SGML common and unzip. So I'm pretty sure we've got these. Let's just check. SGML common is there and unzip. I know we've used already. And as I say, if you're unsure as to whether you've used these or not, Go to the file and look for something like that that's quite distinctive and type that in. You can see there's the, I don't know why that's come up like that, but there's the program that's come up. So you'll know that that definitely has been installed because the program's on the disk. And that's why we need the unzip because this is a zip file again. So copy link address wget paste and again it says here to create a deck directory doc look 31 create a directory to extract the file into otherwise you'll end up with loads of files all over your sources directory Okay, so yeah, they're just files. So got this said, and then as the root user, we just copy these commands in. Configuration using only the most current 3.x version requires the following. So we'll paste that in as well. And that's docbook 3.1 DTD done. So let's tidy that up. And we've got docbook SDSSSL. So this needs docbook 3.1 we've just done. Needs docbook 4.5 DTD and open SP and open Jade we've already got. I have to rejiggle this about. So that needs open SP, so we'll move that to the end. And this needs those two have got XML TO. That needs docbook XML 4.5, which is one of these, I think, isn't it? Yep. Docbook XSL nons we've got and XSL T we've got, so we can double check that. Uh, there it is there. And yeah, FOP is the one I'm not going to install, but I'll put a note to reinstall that later. So we'll go to docbook 4.5 DTD, copy link, paste, okay is this another, yes it is, it's an unzip, so let's make the docbook or five and unzip yep, so same as before so install it by running a set in and then becoming the 
root user to install these packages. Oh, sorry, these commands. And we need to run these in as well. So that's done. So dot book four dot five DTD. Now XML TO. Extract it. Okay, it says links or links. Now, as I said previously, my preferred browser is links, so I'm going to change that. Presume it's in links. Yeah, user bin. So I'll change that to links. Build it and make a check. That's a pass, so sudo make install, and that's done. So that's complete, but needs a rebuild. Rebuild after FOP. So open SP. So it's capital O on open SP, otherwise, you won't find it. some possibly extra configuration there so we'll take a look at that we'll just put the configure in by itself so we'll stack it enable http this switch prevents configure script checking if you have XML. if you have XML, you can remove this option okay so let's do that Enable default catalog, search, enable XML messages, switch add support for XML formatting messages. Well, that sounds like it could be useful. So let's put that in at the end. Right, what's happened here? Missing argument. Ah, oh, is that because I edited this? Yes, it is. Right, let's do that again. So configure. Remove this line completely without anything after 
that and add in that command. It's because I put the space after the backslash, it separated the command. If I record command, that's more what it should look like. So now I'm going to build it. And now I'll make check to test it. It says some may fail. Yeah, nine of them. So that's what we've got. Do not be alarmed. Okay. So let's now install this. And that's complete. So open SP. That's all done. Next we've got open jade. So patch fix a problem with Perl. Gonna export some flags. Then we've got a configuration command here. Let's see what we've got here to twiddle around with. Default search path, open J doesn't look like there's anything else there to bother with. So we'll just configure now. And build package. And we can now install it. Just a little bit of configuration here. Oh, this configuration is only necessary if you intend to use OpenJ to process BLFS XML files through DSSL style sheets. Not necessary. We didn't say it affects anything else if you don't do it, so I guess we can do it. And that is done. So open J done. Shut that down. Dot book D triple S L one seven nine. So it looks like we should have all the dependencies installed. So let's fetch this one and some documentation and test data. Okay, so extract the documentation and then we 
we install the package. The above commands create an installation script for this package. The following commands will perform the necessary tests to confirm your installed docbook SGML toolchain will produce desired results. You must have all these installed and perform tests as the root user. All the tests will be performed from the user share SGML directory as user. So we've got to change directory. The first test should produce no output to your screen and create a file name jtestrtf in the current directory. So let's have a look to see if that's there already. It isn't. So now let's have a look. Yep, there it is. The next test should turn only the following line to standard out. Yep, that looks exactly the same, so that's good. The next test should produce no output to standard out and create a file named testrtf in the current directory. Test.rtf, there it is. The last test should produce no output to standard out and create a file named c1.htm. c1.htm and finally clean up so that it looks like that's all working. So I go back and tidy up. So that's .book D triple SL installed. Now we can install doc book utils Okay, so we've got all this, patch it, and run a set in. Config, oops, configure. Is there anything else to add after that? No, there isn't. Build it, and install. Package in the test suite. Many packages use an alternative name for docbook util scripts. If you wish to create these alternate names, use the phone command as the root user. So we might as well use that. The JW script uses the which command to locate required utilities. You must install which before attempting to use any of the docbook utils programs. Okay. Are we using that there? No, we're not. So we can run this. Uh, that's okay. Let's tidy that up. Put that in. And then we'll go directly to which and install it. Uh, yeah, there is two options on there. There's a script which effectively does what which does, but it does say that um, it is just a simple strict uh, script is the easy solution, but it's not the most comprehensive. So I'd, I'd thoroughly recommend installing the package. And it's simple enough to install and it's quick as well. So I can install. That's it. Put 
put that in the list. Close that down. So now we're up to F cron. So what we've got here, we've got everything we need to install. Uh, it does say text though, so the default is VI, which we've got as well. So um, that's not a problem. Well, I think VI can be installed just to enable the GUI functionality, but that's something we'll do later. So if Cron uses the Cron facility of syslog to log all messages. So we need to add that in. Because the configuration has been changed, we need to reload the syslog daemon. Now add a specific user to run fcron. come out of that and we'll carry on with the installation and configure any extra options here but still no Right, so we need to get rid of that. And the default is send mail, which is what we installed. So I'll get rid of that line. This is indeed unit there, no. So we can set a default text editor. So what did it say about Vi here? Default is Vi. So we can override that with another text editor. Let's put it in specifically. Oops. Uh, I imagine that's going to be in forward slash user, forward slash bin, by, yes, there it is. And this is so, uh, we haven't got that, have we? Maybe used if you have doc book utils installed currently this is right okay so we do want this then so put that in and then it tells us where the location is there All oh, right, I see. So it needs to know where the send mail program is. So again, I assume that's going to be in user bin send mail. No, it's not. Let's look for it. Uh, user S bin. Uh, right, okay, get rid of that hash. Let's try it again. So we've got Pam, yes, Readline, yes. Uh, I don't know what these are. It doesn't mention anything about the send mail or any of the options particularly, but it looks okay. So let's run make to build it and make install. And 
that's done. Configuration. There's some information there, and this is good to run because it creates some directories to run at uh, specific, well, certain times uh, as root. You can see that you get these hourly, daily, weekly, monthly directories. So rather than specify specific times, you can just say, like, run this every hour, and cron will just run them every hour when it needs to. So add that in there. Go to BillFS boot scripts. And we'll install the startup. Finally, again, there's a route to start fcron and generate a vastball fcron systab file. And that looks like that's it. So let's now put that in the log of installed files. And we'll go back to make CA. And all we need to do is to run this. And you can see it's been putting into cron weekly. So it means once a week, this script here will just check that there's no, or to see if there's any more updated files, uh, sorry, updated certificates to install. And if there are, it'll, it'll install them all in the background. So that's make CA completed. Fcron's done. We've got that up and running, which is good because there'll be other packages that use that, that we'll be installing as we go along. Um, I'm going to bring this session to a close and I'm going to try and think to see if there's anything else we need to install before we go into the main part of the build, which is graphical environment. So it'll be all of this chapter, all of this chapter, and then we'll start dipping our toes into different display managers and window managers and so on. Um, I'll probably do that after I've got a web browser up and running. So once we've got a basic system, which will be probably up to there, actually. So it'll be these two chapters, uh, sorry, that single chapter, chapter 24, which is still a lot of work. It doesn't look like a great deal, but it's probably a day's work there. Uh, getting on for a day, assuming there's no problems. Um, once that's installed, I'll be looking at getting a graphical web browser installed, which will probably be a Falcon, if I can find where they've gone. Yeah, probably that. I think that's the easiest one to install in terms of dependencies. Uh, let's have a look at Epiphany. Yeah, that requires a lot of GNOME stuff, so probably not that one. Yeah, this is quite lightweight. This is, um, especially as I think now they've got a lightweight Qt web engine. I seem to remember seeing, I think, which makes things a little bit easier. Um, not in terms of time, it'll still take a bit of time to build, but in terms of um, dependencies, yeah, Firefox has got quite a few dependencies. So it's a bit complicated to set up initially. Uh, right there it goes and again seam monkey is the same um, I probably will install these but only once we've got the main system up and running and we've done the bulk of what we need to do so yeah I will be installing Falcon and it's it's dependencies after we've got the or XORG and then once that's installed and working then we'll be working directly on the machine 